Hello, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, today we will do uh, a world famous short story. Uh, it's called The Shawl by Cynthia Ozick. It's a, one of the finest piece of writing ever, but at the same time it's not, uh, you know, a pleasant uh, kind. It's about profound trauma and memory and all that stuff. Uh, well, um, Cynthia Ozig, uh, uh, she, she wrote novels, stories, poems. Uh, her particular great contribution is about Holocaust. Uh, Holocaust is, um, I mean, uh, of course you all know, but let me just restate it. It's, it's a mass uh, genocide um, uh, inaugurated by Hitler against uh, European Jews. Uh, at least six million people, uh, Jews were killed and uh, maybe one more uh, uh, million children disabled, um, especially mentally disabled, uh, homosexuals, women, uh, they were all burnt alive, you know. So uh, we, the humanity, is capable of such diabolic acts and that is what uh, we realized. Holos means whole costo is burning, whole burning, which is an ancient Greek ritual, uh, sacrificial ritual was given that name for this diabolic uh, act. Okay, so there were uh, several uh, remembrances of it. Um, this particular short story, it's called The Shawl uh, by Cynthia Ozig. The Shawl, um, you know, it recounts um, the story of a uh, young mother, Rosa, uh, her niece, Stella, and Magda, M A G D A her tiny little infant. So uh, the, there's not much story, but uh, it's about the recollection of the diabolic events, uh, Holocaust. In, in this case, uh, Ma Ma Magda's uh, death uh, by, uh, you know, Auschwitz uh, worker, he takes Magda and puts her into electric fire. Okay, so uh, Ozik, uh, Cynthia, I would call her from now on. Um, about she says about writing. Um, well, she says that writing is hallucinatory madness. You will do it no matter what. You can't not do it. She says. She wrote, wrote this famous short story, The Shawl, uh, in 19, uh, she published in 1980 in The New Yorker. Uh, you will be able to access the story uh, from The New Yorker 1980 uh, edition. Okay, and uh, the link will be given. Uh, Famously, I mean, uh, it's not of uh, coincidence, in the year 1990, uh, American Psychiatry Association, which publishes the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Illnesses, came up with what you call PTSD, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Uh, it's, it's, it's heartening to know that the shawl was written at that time and PTSD announcement was also, uh, I mean entry in the DSM-3 also came at that time. Well, I'm not uh, saying the shawl, uh, the story can be re read in a medically reductionist way. This is a uh, example of PTSD and so on. But uh, both are watershed movements in uh, 
you know, uh, culturally, collectively, uh, you know, talking about trauma, acknowledging it, and trauma's enduring presence in humanity. Well, trauma means wound in Greek, okay? But, but uh, in contemporary situation, it is more of a psychological influence. Um, Kathy Carrot, C A R U T H, definition of trauma is very particular for a story like this. Uh, she, in trauma, what happens? According to Carrot, C A R U T H, there is a response, sometimes delayed to an overwhelming event or events, which takes the form of repeated, intrusive halluc uh, hallucinations, dreams, thoughts, or behaviors stemming from the events along with numbing that may have begun during or after the experience and poss possibly also increased arousal and avoidance of stimuli recalling the event. Right. Well, uh, let's tease it a little bit. Trauma can cause, uh, well, uh, the the story taken and the theme taken about the Holocaust is an extreme event, um, is an event unsurpassed in human history. Okay, but uh, trauma can happen everywhere in the family, uh, in a war situation, natural calamity, uh, in torture, prisons, and so on. Uh, uh, the, the, the psychological injury can happen. But uh, it's not as though people experience pain when experiencing event. When people experience pain, they can become benumbed. They can become numb. Too much of pain can cause numbness. At the same time, they can re relive it. How? By way of nightmares dreams, hallucinations, uh, uh, recurrent recalling, enacting, performing, uh, and so on. And uh, this can be at the, uh, as an individual, as a group, as a community, as a large group of uh, a, a village, and so on. It can uh, famous Bhopal gas event, uh, uh, the Bhopal gas tragedy, as they say, methyl isocyanide cyanide uh, gas, uh, well, you know, was a freak accident. A uh, few thousand people were killed. And uh, even now, uh, the, the, the generations who uh, came after the event, those who survived, uh, the tragedy and their generations do remember, do recall, do hallucinate uh, the, the tragic event. Okay? So it can happen anywhere, anytime and it cannot be, it need not be just out there somewhere uh, in some other part of humanity. Okay? So uh, the, 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 the story in some sense, the shawl, recapitulates that kind of uh, trauma. Well, uh, is that all we have to say about trauma? No, not really. Uh, what happens during trauma recollection? Uh, we know that Cynthia Ozeg has done a great job. Actually, the shawl is one of the stories uh, published, uh, the, the series published with the same name. Uh, uh, it is about a mom, uh, I, I've told this already, but let me repeat, Rosa and her infant daughter, she's infant daughter, we don't get to see her much. Uh, she's hidden in the shawl, which mom wears on her bosom. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, 
uh, Stella, the niece, uh, they all keep going, but in the in the concentration uh, universe, concentrationary universe, where they uh, are uh, in the Auschwitz, Auschwitz uh, arena. Uh, what happens is uh, the, it's also very cold outside, so Stella takes away the shawl from uh, uh, Magda, so leaving Magda exposed. So unfortunately, Magda, uh, you know, comes out of the, uh, you know, uh, the darkness to the bright side, and it is noticed by Auschwitz worker, one of them, the soldiers, and they he. Uh, takes her and puts her in the, you know, casts her away into the electric oven where she, you know, is fried to death. And uh, uh, Rosa has a choice uh, to run uh, after Magda, in which case she will be killed. Uh, but she chooses to, you know, uh, self preservation over uh, uh, an instinct to serve. To protect, to or you know, to run after her daughter, which will be futile again. So she retreats. I mean, only to you know, uh, 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 to suppress her uh, uh, loud uh, moaning. Uh, she uh, puts shawl in her mouth so that she can hide the weeping. So uh, this is the first story. The second story is about Rosa's own. Story. She survives uh, Auschwitz and then you know the Holocaust, and she goes to America, where uh, she lives and with traumatic memory of Magda. In fact, she uh, she continues to believe that Magda is alive. Uh, and here, Magda becomes a phantom. Uh, I think uh, here uh, I am obliged to rem recall uh, the phantom limb phenomenon. Uh, neuroscientists, uh, including William o. Ramachandran, have, has you know, uh, extensively talked about the phantom limb phenomenon. Basically, uh, suppose I lose an, uh, this arm by an accident. It is entirely possible that my brain uh, rewires uh, the presence um, uh, still continues to believe that my left arm exists. And I might end up saying, oh, my left arm is pain. Uh, uh, can you help me? But uh, uh, the fact is, I lost my arm and it doesn't ex exist anymore. So the left, uh, the belief in the left arm's presence that I may have is the phenomenon called phantom limb. So people who undergo extreme trauma of a kind can also, uh, you know, recall the event and create a phantom of their own making, which in a sense protect them from disintegration. So there are many, many ways to uh, 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 trauma survivors. Uh, do that. One of the possibilities is that they get numb. Uh, they don't know how to react. Uh, or they can be very profuse in recalling a trauma. Or they might be hallucinating or, you know, uh, getting up from, uh, you know, uh, a, a seeing nightmares and so on. Uh, this can happen from domestic, uh, uh, those who survive domestic violence and those who survive extreme mass uh, genocide like Holocaust can do that. Here, um, uh, let's see what the literature on trauma uh, recall uh, does it. Starting from Freud, Freud uh, walked on uh, mourning and melancholia. Uh, he he worked on uh, people who, you know, recall trauma. One of the ways he uh, believed 
that trauma recollection happens is uh, association. Uh, people can associate one memory to another and then they recall. In a trauma event, dissociation happens. You don't know how to recall anything. Or the associations that you want to make between images, they die. The language refused to cooperate. Uh, after Freud, there has been uh, work, great work on uh, trauma recall, in which case the people have talked about the fa not only the pa failure of language, but the confusion about time and memory. Uh, you, you know, uh, in some sense, confused between past, present and future, uh, you can jumble events or recreate events that never existed in the first place. The, the nature of uh, the trauma is so much that you end up uh, inventing new things and, uh, and that's how uh, trauma recall happens. So, first, uh, critics talk about the failure of language. Second, the failure of memory. Third, the problem of memorialization. Look at an event of that kind, genocide. Or uh, examine uh, some family uh, surviving uh, the crime of untouchability or uh, the crime of, uh, crimes involved uh, domestic violence. Uh, a family or a person can assume for themselves or for herself the responsibility of memorialization. Look, if I die or if I let go of the memory, how do I preserve this memory? If I don't preserve this memory, then the part of who I am or who we are, the, the crimes of the past will go unaccounted or unresponded to. Maybe it is part of my, uh, my cultural memory good, bad and the ugly and if I collapse or if I go, let go of the memory, then it is entirely possible that, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I fail in my duty. So, uh, this is a very important feature about memorialization when it comes to trauma. So, naturally, uh, many responded to Holocaust differently. Some said, uh, like Adorno, um, it is entirely obscene uh, uh, to write fiction or poetry about Holocaust because it is such a horrendous event that took six to eight million people lives uh, in a horrible way and you don't have to, you know, uh, uh, feed on those, leech on those, on such an event to, to you know, uh, make a novel or poem. It's, uh, it's, it's a very obscene act. But that's only one response. The other response is fiction, fictionalizing is part of memory making. And fictionalizing uh, along with memory recall is also a pedagogical event in itself. How do you educate the current generation if you don't recall? How do you uh, uh, educate a current audience if you don't fictionalize it, transpose it, make it palatable and make it, you know, uh, uh, relatable? It's not as though trauma is over with Holocaust, several traumas.
keep happening. For example, the refugee crisis, uh, cross-border migration, uh, displacement due to environmental destruction. You know, uh, capitalism has its own way of uh, reducing people to the cog in the wheel. And those things can, uh, uh, and the new versions of new avatars of patriarchy can uh, cause its own, uh, you know, trauma. Uh, uh, and, uh, and to our theme, disability, uh, is, uh, you know, can be caused by human negligence, human excesses, structural violence, and all that. Uh, so cognitive, physical uh, disabilities can uh, uh, can be made, manufactured, and proliferated, uh, which also come with trauma and trauma recall, and it's uh, reliving uh, in the times to come. So uh, uh, we we have to have you know uh, a nuanced account of trauma so that uh, we understand how things work. All right. Now, before talking about Ozik, I want to uh, talk about the connection between trauma and literature. Trauma autobiography need not be the only way to recall, uh, to uh, work on trauma. Trauma work need not happen only through autobiography. Trauma work can operate through different genres such as poetry, autobiography, fiction, uh, and letters, you know, and even uh, uh, gossip and, uh, uh, you know, graffiti. It can happen. How? Because trauma's language, trauma's narrative form does not say, well, you have to only recall this way. Uh, you, you, there is there are many way to uh, re recall it. For example, uh, for example, Holocaust. Recalling it in in terms of autobiography becomes a great challenge. You know why? Because in autobiography, what happens is there is a protagonist, and he or she recalls some things, and after recall it looks as though some other portion of life is left and there is always a chance that something else is left for things to survive in autobiography. But here, all things lead to death. So that's why uh, a, 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 a trauma recall in autobiography is the most difficult thing. So that, that's why you have multiple forms coming and uh, they together uh, make the trauma work possible. So Cynthia Ozeg uh, um, does this, these two, three uh, short stories, and that's be our concern. And how am I going to do it? I'm going to place it in terms of disability studies. Uh, this time, I'm going to, you know, uh, use concepts such as debility and attachments to uh, understand this great short story. Thank you.